In this lesson, we're going to slow things down a bit. We're going to practice slow flight or flying just above the stall speed. Master slow flight and you are indeed on your way to mastering the airplane. Remember, do your homework before starting this flight. We're up in the air at 4,000 feet over Puget Sound, a nice, safe altitude. I want you to feel comfortable operating at slow speeds so you'll know how to control the aircraft as you're operating in the traffic pattern and when you're approaching to land. Because slow flight is close to stalling, you'll need to know where the critical spots are. But don't worry, I won't let you get into too much trouble today. No, I'm not wearing a parachute either. If you see me wearing one, then that's when you need to start worrying yourself. I'd like to demonstrate the relationship between airspeed and angle of attack. You can read more about it in the ground school section. As we reduce the power and airspeed decreases, we need to increase the angle of attack to maintain sufficient lift for level flight. As we increase power and the airspeed increases, we need to decrease the angle of attack to maintain altitude. This relationship between angle of attack and airspeed is an important one. It's a relationship that you can't get out of, nor should you want to. Watch how I must increase the pitch attitude, or angle of attack in this case, to hold altitude as the airplane's speed decreases. As the airplane slows down, I must increase the angle of attack to maintain sufficient lift to keep the airplane flying in level flight. As the airspeed decreases below 70 knots, you can easily see how much the angle of attack must increase to keep the airplane in the air at this slower speed. You can fly an airplane at any speed between cruise speed and stall speed. Now, what's stall speed? Well, that's coming up in a future lesson. The most important thing here is to understand that as you slow the airplane down, you must increase its angle of attack to maintain the desired flight condition, which, in our situation, was straight and level flight and you'll need to add power to remain in straight and level flight. Are you ready? Let's go. Reduce the power to about 1500 RPM and allow the airspeed to slow to 60 knots. Slow down. When you get there, you'll have to increase the power to nearly 2,000 RPM to maintain 4,000 feet at 60 knots. Make small adjustments to pitch to maintain 60 knots and adjustments to power to hold 4,000 feet. Use sufficient nose-up trim to reduce the back pressure needed on the joystick to keep the airplane in this attitude. This is how you enter slow flight while maintaining your altitude. So, if you're following a slower airplane as you're approaching to land, at least you know how to slow down to avoid chewing off the tail of his airplane with your propeller, right? This is also another reason why we practice slow flight. Excellent. Now I want you to exit slow flight and return to straight and level flight at 4,000 feet. I'm still controlling the bank for you while you do the rest. I want you to add power and simultaneously lower the nose. As the airplane begins to accelerate, 
lower the nose at a rate that allows you to maintain altitude. See how the airplane is accelerating while maintaining altitude? Fantastic. When you reach 100 knots, reduce power to 2500 RPM and trim for cruise flight. When you reach 100 knots, reduce engine RPM to maintain 100 knots. This is how you exit slow flight and return to a faster cruise flight condition. You remember when I said we always use attitude, power, and trim in that order? Well, there are a few exceptions. One is when exiting slow flight. It's best to add power and simultaneously lower the nose. If we lower the nose first, then added power, we might lose a little altitude as we accelerate. No sense doing this if we don't have to. You can see that in order to maintain altitude, you must decrease the wing's angle of attack. Do you see how a faster speed allows the airplane to fly at a lower angle of attack? Can you see the relationship between angle of attack and airspeed? Now, if you're not getting this, refer to the ground school session on the topic of slow flight. This is a very important topic, and you must understand the aerodynamics involved here for any of this to make sense. I think you probably have many questions, but now it's time to practice on your own. I'm going to cut you loose to practice entering and exiting slow flight. So practice flying at speeds between 100 knots and 50 knots. Hopefully, this won't put knots in your stomach. Make sure you maintain altitude as you do this. And if you're feeling daring, you can even try a small turn while you're in slow flight. Just add power as necessary to maintain altitude and adjust that pitch to maintain your airspeed. 